If you're over the age of 25, no doubt you've heard this music countless times. This is the most played tune in the world today. 1.8 billion times a day that tune is played and it costs Nokia absolutely nothing. But this isn't the original music. It's actually from a classical guitar piece written by the composer Francisco Tarraga. Remarkably, it kind of happened by accident. And ironically, the technology which allowed them to use this would soon signal the end for them as the world's largest mobile phone company. Although it's of course now most famous as a ringtone, its first use by Nokia was actually in a 1992 commercial for the Nokia 1011. The ad uses the original classical guitar piece, Grand Vos, performed on guitar and with the wider context of the piece, not just a short excerpt. The premise of the ad is that Nokia can help connect people. Two men are sitting on a park bench, one dismayed man leaves behind some flowers, and the other man is able to use the flowers as a gift, and can use his Nokia phone to contact his lover. The short excerpt, later known as the Nokia tune, plays at the moment he takes his phone out of his pocket, almost as if it's the ringtone of the phone. Tapio Hakkinen, Nokia's previous head of sound design, said of this advert, nowadays it doesn't feel that special, but at the time, technology adverts were super technical. Having a soft acoustic guitar piece was so different, it was reflecting the human nature of Nokia's connecting people motto. Technology back then was often seen as very Orwellian and intimidating, the same thing was true with the invention of the Apple Mac in 1984, the commercial famously stating, 1984 won't be like 1984. The Apple Macs of the 1990s came in bright colours, and with handles attached to them to make them more friendly to the user, and Grand Vols could offer the same thing for Nokia, being part of that subconscious branding which could help make their products appear more friendly. The piece was likely chosen as it was a favourite of Anzi Van Jockey, the executive vice president of Nokia at the time. A romantic waltz on the classical guitar is of course well suited to an advert focusing on human connection, but musically it's actually very well suited to the commercial as well. The opening section is quite discreet, making it suitable as relaxing background music, before building to the easily recognisable iconic theme which coincides with the moment the phone is taken out of the pocket. Although it appeared in this commercial, it was yet to appear in any Nokia phones as a ringtone. In fact, at this time, Nokia weren't even thinking of the possibility of including music as a ringtone. Engineers working on the phone were actually trying to find the most annoying frequency to use, presumably because it would be the most noticeable and attention-grabbing. One day, someone from Nokia's marketing department heard the engineers working on this frequency and suggested that they should try to use some actual music as a ringtone. At first, they wanted to include a number of other well-known, more recent melodies, but of course, anything more recent would be covered by copyright. Happily for Nokia, Tarraga died in 1909, meaning that his music was free to be used. A number of other ringtones written in-house by Nokia were also included, although none would capture the warmth and friendliness that Grand Vols would give them for their branding. But technology was constantly changing, and if Nokia's newfound Sonic brand would survive, it would have to withstand a rapidly changing market. When the Nokia tune was first introduced in the mid-90s, it was only possible for mobile phones to play back monophonic music. That means music with one note at a time in a synthesised tone. You couldn't play back MP3s, you couldn't even play back music with multiple sounds at once to create harmony or chords. Their only choice was music that had this single line melody. This meant that it was very difficult to find music that would fit within these limitations whilst also offering the friendly branding Nokia desired. Happily, Grand Vols was an ideal candidate. Soon though, everything would be about to change, and by the end of the 1990s, more interesting polyphonic ringtones would start to become available. Yamaha had built a chip that made it possible to play back polyphonic music, and it was starting to be put into a number of other phones. This would not only give the possibility of more interesting, customizable ringtones to the user, but it would allow phone manufacturers to enter into the rapidly growing market of selling well-known music as ringtones. Nokia could have used this chip by Yamaha, but they wanted to find their own solution, which didn't depend on any third-party hardware. Nokia reached out to the musician Thomas Dolby, known for the singles She Blinded Me With Science and Hyperactive, who had started a company which was building and implementing online synthesizers which could play back music with a very small file size. This computer is a prime example of the thing that they use. They take the music traditionally written, transfer it into numbers, insert it into the computer, and the computer drives four synthesizers at the same time. This one is playing Chopin's Minute Waltz. The 
The technology built by Beatnik, Dolby's company, works really well. But people didn't really embrace the possibility of what it could do. And Beatnik never found a way to monetize their technology. Meanwhile, Nokia still had their problem of not being able to synthesize polyphonic ringtones. They approached Beatnik to see if they could port their synthesizer technology over to Nokia phones, and Beatnik succeeded in building a scaled down version which could then be used within Nokia phones. And because we've made it really small and efficient, it was exactly what the world's largest mobile phone company needed to play ringtones in their phone. Thomas Dolby and the team at Beatnik composed a number of other ringtones, but of course it was Granville's, the Nokia tune, which was the one that they really wanted to use. By this time, it had achieved this unique ability to show that a Nokia product was being used without anyone even seeing or knowing that there was one nearby. Although by the early 2000s, it started to look as though Granville's days were numbered, as the customizable ringtone market grew to a worth of more than $4 billion a year. Users were willing to pay up to $5 for a ringtone, and a significant portion of each sale went to the phone manufacturer. And so manufacturers, including Nokia, started to shift their focus towards selling these customizable ringtones. But Nokia soon faced an even bigger problem, something that would be an existential threat to them as a company. An iPod. <laughs> a phone. Are you getting it? Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. The introduction of the iPhone in 2007 meant that customers and manufacturers were starting to see phones no longer as just a tool for connecting people, but as multi-purpose entertainment devices which could replace all the devices people already owned. Smartphones had actually been around for many years before, but they were in a niche market, better suited to business and specific use cases. It was the iPhone that shook everything up and offered a glimpse into the future. In 2008, a year after the iPhone was first introduced, Nokia was still the world's largest mobile phone company, with a global market share of more than 38%. They achieved this through years of innovation, building a reliable brand of simple products that put mobile phone technology into the hands of millions. Grand Vos, the Nokia Tune, was one of their most successful tools for this branding. But with the introduction of the iPhone, Nokia was starting to lack in one key area, software. Arguably, the greatest innovation made by Apple with the iPhone was the use of software which was miles ahead of anyone else at the time. Not long after, Google would introduce Android, which would offer a similar but more open experience to the iPhone. Nokia, however, didn't have any of this software, and so the Nokia tune went from being a symbol of reliability and innovation into being a symbol of outdated and featureless technology. The Nokia tune had been updated throughout the years to fit the changing musical culture, such as the folk guitar style introduced in 2008, and a more discreet marimba style introduced in 2011. But the sound coming from mobile phones around the world was no longer a single set of program ringtones, nor was it a customizable MP3 ringtone set by the user. It was now the world's music coming from a phone with a built-in iPod and iTunes store. The final nail in the coffin for the Nokia tune was a contest run in 2012 where users could send in their own versions on the original Nokia theme. The winning entry was this dubstep style. Nokia would later sell their mobile phone division to Microsoft in 2014, and with it came the death of the Nokia tune. My undergrad degree was actually in classical guitar, so I'm happy to report that Tarragas' legacy as a respected composer remains intact. But the synthesized version used by Nokia, not so much. It's no longer the sound of Nokia, but the sound of a time gone by. This was once the most played, the most well-known music in the world. And perhaps this is why there's now a generation of people who have no idea what this music is. <laughs>